In this video, we will walk through the process of generating the PR26 CDBG Financial Summary Report. In addition to this video, there are also line-by-line -line directions for the PR26 online in the IDIS library. To download these, go to the IDIS login page. On the menu on the left, look for a link labeled Library you will see a link for the guidance on the CDBG Financial Summary. To generate the report, let's start at the home page of IDIS and click on the Reports module. Before you generate the report in MicroStrategy, you first have to set the parameters on the Reports Parameters page of IDIS. You should see the PR26 listed here. Let's click on Add Edit. At the top of the next page, it will indicate the year that you are viewing. If this is the wrong year, you can change it or add a new year. This screen lists all of the adjustments that you can make to the PR26. All of the other fields on the report that are not listed here will be pulled from the system or calculated. The first field listed is Line 1, Unexpended CDBG Funds at the End of the Previous Reporting Period. This is the amount of unspent carryover CDBG funds you had at the end of your previous program year. All CDBG grantees will need to provide an amount here. The best way to determine this amount is to look at line 16 of your previous year's PR26. Again, almost all grantees should provide a number for line 1. For many grantees, this is the only adjustment they will need to make. Other common adjustments include line 17 and line 18. For grantees with a CDFI or NRSA strategy area, you will most likely need to adjust line 17. For grantees with projects that involve multi-unit housing, you will need to adjust line 18. Other adjustments may be made if program income was credited to the wrong year, or if there are unliquidated obligations that must be accounted for. We will talk about these in more detail once we open the report. Anytime you do make adjustments, it is good practice to explain in an attachment to the PR26 or in the caper narratives the basis for making those adjustments. Once you are done making adjustments, be sure to save the parameters screen. At this point, we can go ahead and generate the report. Here's an example of a final version of the PR26. Let's walk through each section of the report. The first section is a summary of the resources available during the program year. The system will automatically insert the grant amount and will calculate the amount of program income based on the receipts that were created during the program year. If you are not able to receipt income until after the close of the program year and need to include it on that year's report, you would need to use line 7 to make an adjustment. Again, it's up to the grantee to enter an amount on line 1. The second section is the summary of expenditures. The first three lines of this section are used to determine the basis for the low mod benefit test in section 3. That is to say, all expenditures except for planning, administration, and 108 repayments. The system then adds those expenditures back in and comes up with a total expenditure for the program year and a balance to expend at the end of the program year in line 16. The number in line 16 for this year will be used for line 1 for next year's report. Part 3 calculates a grantee's compliance with the low mod benefit test. Each grantee certifies that at least 70 percent of their CDBG funds will go towards meeting a low mod national objective as opposed to slum and blight or urgent need national objectives. Grantees have a choice of meeting this requirement over a period of one, two, or three years. If you are unsure what your compliance period is, refer to the signed certifications in your action plan. If you are using a two- or three-year certification, you will need to complete lines 23, 24, and 25 on the parameters screen. For grantees with a CDFI or NRSA area, you will also need to run the Line 17 Detail Report, available in the PR26 folder. This will help you determine the amount that you need to provide on Line 17. Essentially, 
you will only be counting expenditures that benefited low and moderate income households. For grantees who use CDBG for multi-unit activities, you will need to run the Line 18 Detail Report, available in the PR26 folder, and determine what amount you need to provide on Line 18 of the Parameters screen. Like Line 17, you will only count expenditures that benefited low and moderate income households. The end goal of Section 3 is for Line 22 and Line 26 for multi-year certifications to be greater than 70 percent. Section 4 of the report calculates compliance with the 15 percent public service obligation cap. It is important to understand the exact rule here. Grantees are not allowed to obligate more than 15 percent of their grant plus 15 percent of their prior year program income. Many grantees think the rule is that they cannot spend more than 15 percent. The first line in this section does list the amount dispersed against public services during the program year. Two adjustments are then made to account for obligations made this year that will not occur until next year, and to account for obligations made in previous years that were dispersed in this year. You can see that line 31 adds in unliquidated obligations for the current year and then subtracts unliquidated obligations from prior years. If you have any public service activities that extend beyond one year and you do not make these adjustments, you will most likely be under your 15% cap for this year and over your 15% cap for next year. The BOSMAC version of the PRO3 report is helpful in determining your unliquidated obligations. Section 5 of this report calculates compliance with the 20% planning and administration obligation cap. Like the public service cap, there is a misunderstanding about the exact rule, which is grantees are not allowed to obligate more than 20% of their grant plus 20% of their current year program income. Again, the test is based on obligations, not expenditures. Also like Section 4, you must make adjustments to the unliquidated obligation line items if you have any planning and administration activities that extend beyond one year. For example, let's say the grantee procures a planning firm in 2010 as part of their 2010 planning and administration budget, but the contract extends into 2011. The balance remaining on the contract at the end of 2010 would be reported as an unliquidated obligation on line 38 on the 2010 PR26 and again on line 39 of the 2011 PR26.